Hello, welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to be comparing two softboxes. The Niwa Octagonal Softbox and the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2. Now I'm really excited to do this video because I want to see if you can save money and still get pro results or if it is worth spending that extra and going for the bigger brands. The cost of equipment can really set you back and if you're not a pro, you can't always justify spending money on the top end gear. So it's nice to have some affordable alternatives. I'm gonna show you the two different soft boxes and how they look. I'm gonna put them side by side and see if you can tell the difference. Let me know in the comments below which one you think is which and we'll see if you can tell. But don't fast forward through the video and cheat I want to see if you can tell the difference before you watch the rest of the video and then I'll unveil 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 at the end so before we look at the quality of the light that each softbox produce uh, let's have a look at the physical build quality and what you get with each product first up the aperture light dome mini 2 now this is a if you hadn't guessed by the name a mini version of the light dome 2 by aperture it's a very similar design you've got the rods that are already attached so it's nice and easy to set up and pack down so that's how quickly you can pack this thing down and set it up as well look at the size of that you can store this nicely in the included soft padded bag here it is great little size that for carrying around pop the soft box into the bag and you're away it's a great little bag this nice and padded to keep your soft box safe you also get the honeycomb grid which i'll show you in a bit and also a gel mount so you can put different color gels in here put it in the middle of the soft box and then you've got a different color light you get one layer of diffusion with the aperture light dome mini 2 but there's also an inner diffuser that goes in there as well so if you want to add a little bit more diffusion you can put that in there now it's got a rounded design so when it creates a catch light in an eye you can see the shape of it is round rather than those square softbox shapes so that's something to think about if that's what you want. It's a Bowens mount, so it mounts to any of your lights that have the Bowens mount adapter on there. Both these soft boxes have Bowens mount. This is a metal plate, so it's nice and sturdy. The material itself is of the quality that you'd expect from Aperture. They just make great stuff. The size of this thing, I mean, probably looks quite big on there, but look at that. It's a great size compared to this. Another thing I just want to point out as well with both of these is that you can actually fit them through a door frame without collapsing them. Watch this. So that's an extra bonus. Like with the Aperture Light Dome 2, I always have to collapse it to take it into other rooms. So. If that's something you're going to be doing, transporting it around to different places or different rooms within the house, this is the one for you. You can also fit the Niwa through the door as well, so bonus points for both. Okay, next up, the Niwa Octagonal Softbox. So as you can see to start with, it's quite a lot bigger than the Light Dome Mini. So we'll see if this has an effect on the lighting itself. But really, it's the surface area isn't that much bigger. It's only these little bits that poke out the, the difference and obviously the size of the box itself. So obviously the size is something to bear in mind if you're limited on space. Again, Bowen's mount, but this time this is a plastic design. So this box is quite a lot lighter. And that could, again, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. The only thing I thought of was these release pins are plastic as well. So if you knock one of those and it breaks off, then that's it, it's broke. You, you're not gonna be able to use that anymore. So that's one thing to consider. It's not gonna be as durable if you drop it, but if you're just using it in one place all the time, you're just keeping it set up and you're not moving it around all the time, it's probably fine. And for the price difference, it's, uh, and it feels quite sturdy to be fair, but I suppose that's where the difference in price lies. Similar design where you can undo and condense the soft box. It's a little bit tougher to uh, pack down and set up, I've noticed, but it also comes with a soft bag, but it's not padded. 
It's like a PE bag from the school days. But again, that can go in there and at least it does come with a bag though. And that can go in there and you can carry that and keep it safe, sort of. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to uh, get the rods in place there, but it's still quicker than having to insert them into the holes. The quality of the material feels really good. If anything, it feels a little bit thicker than the aperture material. But I'm interested to see if there's a difference in colour because when we switched them on briefly last night, we didn't do any tests, we just switched them on to make sure everything was alright. I did notice a little hint of blue in the newer softbox, but that could have just been my eyes adjusting. Uh, so today will be the proper test and we will see. First thing you'll notice is this isn't a rounded shape, octagonal shape. So the catch light is going to be slightly different in your eyes with this one. You also get two sheets of diffusion with this. There's one that goes in the middle of the softbox and then you've got the outer layer as well. So if you do want extra diffusion, this has got that and it comes with that. It doesn't come with the honeycomb grid though. Right, so. At the moment I'm using the Aperture Light Dome 2, so we're going to take this off and switch it out for these. So, Right, see if you can guess which is which, the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 or the newer Octagonal Softbox. They're so similar you have to really study them closely to find the differences between each one. But A was the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 and B was the Niwa Octagonal Softbox. Let me know in the comments, were you surprised with the results? I'd love to know what you think because, yeah, I'm really impressed with how close they are considering the price difference. We wanted to make sure it was a fair test so we kept the softboxes the same distance from Beth on each of the tests. What I did notice was the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 was slightly warmer than the Niwa Softbox and also the shadows were slightly softer as well on the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2. Now something you get included with the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 is the honeycomb grid and that comes in handy when you don't want the, your light to spill over into the background as much and that also darkens your shadows and it also makes them a little bit more harsh as well. So if you want that extra little bit of darkness within your picture then it's a great idea to use the honeycomb grid. Now if we're comparing these two soft boxes to the big boy Aperture Light Dome 2 you can tell that the shadows are a lot softer and also brighter lighter on the Aperture Light Dome 2, the bigger version. But again, you are paying a lot extra for that one. I think these two are great alternatives, especially for the price and also the saving of space. Another thing to consider is the shape of the light. So the Aperture Light Domes are rounded, whereas the Niwa is an octagonal shape. When you're doing close-ups of eyes, for example, or on a, a reflective surface like glass or something like that, you'll be able to see the shape of the light either in the person's eye or in the reflection. So that's something to bear in mind, but it might not matter to you so much. So again, just pointing it out, just in case you want to know. I actually can't believe how close these two products are. If you showed me these side by side and didn't tell me which one was which, I'd have to look really close to figure out which one was which before I knew. And the Aperture is nearly three times the price of the Niwa. So you just gotta think, is it three times as good? You're gonna have to look at the features and the build quality and what's important to you to determine whether or not it's worth three times the price for you. So weigh up what's most important to you and think about the build quality and the durability, the type of case that they come with. So the padded Aperture case, or the regular Niwa case, the size and the space you have in the room that you'll be filming in, how the soft box makes your image look and the look that you're going for, and then finally the price. It's a tough one because personally I love how small the Aperture Light Dome Mini is and it's just the perfect size for filming in a bedroom or something like that, it's ideal little size. But on the other hand, the Niwa is the price that you'd want to pay for a softbox. So that they're the two things that I would have to weigh up, the price and the size. I love the size of the Mini. So for me, that probably just has the edge and the shadows are slightly softer from just using one layer of diffusion. So I think for me, the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 just has the edge over the Niwa, personally.
But I'd love to know what you think, so please leave a comment below and let me know which one you preferred. I really hope this video has helped you make a decision or at least clarified a few things for you before you go ahead and buy one. It's certainly been an eye-opener for me because I've always wanted to see what the Light Dome Mini was like compared to the larger version of the Light Dome. And also, I really wanted to test an affordable version of a softbox against the Light Dome 2. So it's been a really good little side-by-side -side comparison for for me as well. So, uh, I think that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials. I'm also on Instagram and there you'll find announcements, behind the scenes and bloopers as well. So head over to the Instagram account and I'll see you there. I'm working on some really exciting lighting. I'm gonna have to just use that. Yeah. Exciting lighting tutorials that I'm really looking forward to uploading and sharing with you all. It's going to be a series actually, a series of lighting tutorials to accommodate for a lot of different setups. So stay tuned for those videos and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.